again, good afternoon, everybody. Quite insightful presentations from Juanita, Apiwe, and Gadel. So my presentation today will be on the advancements of 3D printing and robotic technology in the built environment and the opportunities uh, for youth. This is the outline of my presentation. Within the 10 minutes, I'll, I'll, I'll do an overview of the technology. We'll look at the technical processes of 3D printing, how it's currently used in the world, how much it costs, findings, and um, how ready it is for, 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 for the market. And most importantly, the opportunities for the youth. So high level, 3D printing is taking a concept, converting it to a, a digital format, you know, using BIM and CAD models, which Katlero also spoke about earlier, and converting that model to an STL file, then also converting it to, um, uh, or rather slicing it in different layers. After slicing it, you move it to what we call a 3D printer. And the 3D printer then spits out or prints a building as shown here. So this is the entire process of the 3D printing actual structures or general objects. Now, in the next video, I want to show you um, 3D concrete printing in action just to show you how it works in real life. So um, that's just a glimpse of uh, 3D concrete print and action. As you can see, it's mainly automated with minimal um, human intervention. And um, it can also print in the dark and overnight. So that's one of the strongest value proposition of pursuing this as a construction technology. Next slide. So uh, with regards to the technologies that are out there in the market, there are essentially two ways or two philosophies from a design perspective. The, the first approach is using a robotic arm system. The second one is using a gantry uh, getter system. In this slide, I show you how, this is, this is how um, a typical gantry getter system looks like. As you can see, it is uh, four columns, which are supported by the foundation and also a gantry beam. And this is where the concrete is extruded. This is also a typical robotic arm system uh, with, uh, with weight and uh, center at the uh, extreme end, and which allows the robotic arm to go back and forth in the longitudinal direction. The next video shows you a typical gantry system in action. Um, and this is the system printing a tower structure. As you can see, gantry systems can um, print or, or build structures that are really big, such as towers and so forth. Now, um, to uh, you know, a typical site where that uses a robotic arm system. This is a, uh, this is the building that the robotic arm system um, is printing. video, the robotic arm systems are generally smaller systems and are not as big as the gantry systems and generally print 
within a you know within a structure and around themselves. Now um, let's move then to real life projects. In 2016, um, there was a house printed by Epis Co in in Moscow. The house was around 38 square meters, which is about the size of a traditional RGP house. So this was back in 2016. And in 2019, um, a company called Episco again uh, printed a structure in Dubai. This was a more bigger, this is, which is a bigger structure. It was around 640 square meter in size. So this, uh, this, this was quite a big project. And a Chinese company called Winsun, a couple of years ago, um, took it to the next level and started building multi-story buildings with 3D concrete printing technology. As you can see on your right, this is a multi-story building. And when you go to, on, on the picture on the left, these are numerous apartments that were built uh, using 3D concrete printing. So the big question is, um, is this technology viable from a financial point of view, right? Is it commercially sustainable and is it competitive with let's say traditional models? So we did a competitive study uh, comparing three, uh, print, uh, brick and mortar, robotic arm systems and gantry systems. When we did our comparison from a square meter point of view, we found uh, traditional you know, methodologies um, a bit more expensive. You know, our, our research showed us that it cost around 238 using brick and mortar, 199 using robotic arm systems and um, around 186 using a gantry system. The biggest reason for this, as you've seen now, uh, is the labor. So with a brick and mortar system, with the structure that we were doing research on, it cost around 81 rands. But for a robotic and gantry system, that significantly came down to around 11 rands and 18 rands, right? Which is the strongest, which, which is the strongest value proposition, I guess, um, from a cost perspective with the printing technology. The other thing, and I think this is, this is a big disadvantage, these technologies are quite expensive. When we did our breakdown again, it cost around 17 rand per square meter um, with regards to machinery required uh, to build the structure. Um, but it cost around uh, 80 rands for the Boticam system and around 60 rand for a Gentry system, which is um, more expensive or more costly when compared to brick and mortar. So how much do they cost? You know, a Gentry system we'd get for around 2.1 million. Uh, plus or minus, and uh, for a robotic arm system, you can get away with around 4.3 uh, million. This is because it's more complex and uh, there's a bit more technology that comes into using a robotic arm system. So just findings and um, some market readiness research that we've worked on, 3D concrete printing is still in its infancy stage and only a few companies have managed to successfully establish a manufacturing plant to run real life projects. This is across the world. Printers are manufactured on a request basis. So it costs around, I mean, it takes around three months if you order a printer to, to get it assembled. This is excluding importing and so forth. They generally use commonly available materials with like uh, cement and sand, which make it uh, very accessible. And there's a big opportunity here with regards to developing materials that can be used for 3D printing inclusive of waste materials. So I think the most important slide, um, opportunities for the youth, right? So this project that we're doing research on is funded by the Department of Science and Innovation and a research partner, the University of Johannesburg. So at the end of the research, we need to give this project or this technology and IP to uh, beneficiaries or, or cooperatives that are interested in pursuing this technology within their companies. We also have a project in KZN where we'll be building around 50 houses as a pilot project to, to just validate whether uh, we have the technical aspect right and whether it's feasible as per our theoretical research. There's also a big opportunity for material suppliers, as I've said, if you're in the material business, um, we currently have not finally, uh, have not developed material for the printer. So if that's something that you're interested in and there's something you specialize in, there's a low hanging opportunity there. So another low hanging opportunity is the research funding. So this, we, we currently have research funding for you know, young people who would want to study their masters or PhD 
but then this should be within the engineering and uh, quantity surveying areas. So I just want to acknowledge the Department of Science Innovation and the research partner, UJ, for allowing me to do this and funding the project. And then program director, these are my contacts if, you, if anybody wants to get a hold of me or wants to um, join this project. Thank you.